Good day, everybody. Uh, recently, I was chatting with a friend of mine, Rob Guyot. He's a frequent denizen of my comments section, and he's an all-around good guy, even if he is one of those upside-down people from Australia. Uh, but he brought to my attention a very simple and fun demonstration uh, that by simply driving down a northwest-southeast or northeast-southwest oriented road for a short distance, and by short I mean a mile or even less, one and a half kilometers for you metric sorts, uh, that you could verify that the Earth's radius, if it's a globe, is what it's claimed to be, about 6,371 kilometers. And this is so simple to partake in, I couldn't resist doing it because no less than four flat Earth myths can be busted by doing this simple practical activity. Uh, number one, it demonstrates that lines of longitude do not continue to get further apart in the southern hemisphere. Now, me being in the northern hemisphere, of course, I can't demonstrate that. But if you live in the southern hemisphere, I highly encourage you to do this test yourself and prove it. Uh, two, it will show that distances in reality are not half the size that they're claimed to be in Google Earth and other sources. Uh, see enslaved by no media and some of the other really fringy flat earthers for that nonsense uh three uh that the earth's equatorial radius as i said is 6371 kilometers it is not the 10,000 kilometers that flat earth claims it to be which it must be since they say the distance from the pole to the equator is the same as it is on earth and four it demonstrates that the AE map can thus not possibly represent the true dimensions and positions of the continents for the reasons described above. Because as his spreadsheet says, the Tropic of Capricorn must be a much greater diameter than the Tropic of Cancer, when in reality they are both the same. So, the methodology to do this is quite simple. You just find a straight road, like I said before, of a kilometer or more in length, northeast, southwest, northwest, southeast oriented. The longer the road, the more accurate. Uh, enter your starting in latitude and longitude and decimal degrees as you get from your GPS. And no flat earthers, whether you believe in satellites or not, we know you trust GPS coordinates, so go ahead and use them. Drive down the road. Stop as close as you can to a one-tenth kilometer increment when you get to the end and take a second set of readings, your second coordinate pair. Enter them into the spreadsheet again. Enter the distance traveled. And I've modified ROM sheet slightly, one so that I can enter degrees, minutes, seconds, rather than having to convert to decimal degrees. And two, it will calculate your heading rather than having to rely on the compass heading you might have for the road. And there you have it. And we'll come back and show the results down below in just a moment. I'm going to open up Google Earth and show you the road I picked to do this test on. I chose Highway 202, which is not far from me. It's just west of Salt Lake City. That's a nice northwest southeast orientation. You might recognize the area. There's the very large Kennecott smelter stack, 12, 1300 feet tall, and the Ochre Mountains, and the Great Salt Lake. And Salt Lake itself, again, is over there in the east. So my starting location is right here by Salt Air. There's no 3D building for it, unfortunately. But you'll see it when I start the video. And I parked on the overpass of I-80, or right over I-80. I drove southeastwards to this turnoff right here. And I'm gonna measure the distance now so that you'll see that value when I put it in later with the rest of the coordinates. And we're gonna measure from beginning point Down here to the end, and the distance is 1.92 kilometers right there. 
and a bearing of 139.28 degrees. And you'll see that this calculates on the spreadsheet to that value as well. So I'm going to fire up the video of the drive and I'll enter these values in the spreadsheet as I read them off on the phone and we'll see just how accurate we got. Good afternoon. I'm out here at the Great Salt Air next to the Great Salt Lake west of Salt Lake City and I'm coming out here to enter my data for Rob Guyot's spreadsheet. So I'm going to show my location here and I'm going to reset the mileage and get the GPS locations at the top of the bridge when I get there. But here we are just next to the Great Salt Air just off of I-80. And when I get up to the bridge I'll be back and we'll reset the mileage and get the GPS locations and we'll get some coordinate points. So I'm coming up here to the top of the uh, bridge from Salt Air over I-80. I've been here before and done some pictures of the Kennecott smelter stack, which is off to my right. It's really, really hazy today and ugly. But it turns out from the top of this bridge down the highway here was a good place to measure off the distance. And it's not quite directly southeast, but it's at a bearing of 139, which is pretty darn close. And it makes for good values for his spreadsheet. So give me a second, I'll get the GPS coordinates here. Okay, so here are the coordinates at the first point. This will be the northwest point. And we'll enter these in the spreadsheet when we get back home. I've marked off the mileage at 0, 0.0. We're going to go down the highway here to where it bends, and there's a dirt road or dirt pull off to the left. It's about 1.2 miles, if I remember, from Google Maps. So let's drive on down there as soon as this truck goes by. And we'll get the GPS from the second point. And this is just heading southeast on Highway 202. miles from our starting location and we'll measure this off in Google Earth and get the exact mileage but here are the second coordinates this will be the southeast location Here's 
kind of a look around of where I'm at. This is looking over west. It's a fairly obvious building up there on top of that hill. All right, get back home, plug these in, see what we got. Okay, we're back. And here's the values we got after typing in the GPS coordinates over here. Traveling 1.92 miles. There's the 139.29 degree heading off by a hundredth of a degree which could be just a pixel of measurement error. And down below here are the most important columns in the results. Mean latitude of my test was 40.739 degrees. The test error, this is the difference between the radius we measured on the drive compared to the actual radius of 6,371. At my location, my latitude and longitude, we got within 0.18% of the actual value. From my drive, I would have measured the equator, the North Pole distance, as 9,990 kilometers. And the actual is 10,008. So that's how close we got. I thought that was rather amazing. And again, I highly recommend you do this yourself. And over here, we have the flat earth predictions column, which is what you would get if you assumed that the earth's radius was 10,008 kilometers, which is their distance from the North Pole to the equator. But of course, that's a problem because then you get an equatorial circumference much much larger than the actual value so for example at my latitude the actual radius of this circle would be 4827 kilometers whereas the flat earth would be 5478 so i think i would have to audit more courses at Flat Earth Community University in order to come up with enough excuses to wave aside this assault on Flat Earth's unreality. And speaking of FECU, I highly recommend their recently released geology course. Um, I think you'll find there's a lot of hot topics covered and you will note that it gets really hard by the end and uh, so I will leave a link in the description. But anyway, Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, I hope you will try this out. And thank you again to Rob, uh, because this was well worth the time and it, anybody can do it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a good day.